obviously Amazon is emphasizing that this is incredibly unlikely and yet the fact that it happened at all is worrying and feels like such an invasion of privacy. You know, what should we make of this? It's a classic payoff between great stuff you get from technology companies and, and stuff that happens in the background that, that, that we give them. Um, a lot of people who, who bought this device didn't, I'm sure didn't read the terms and conditions. Um, they, they don't know what's happening in the background. Um, so now that this comes out, it's probably going to cause people to be, to be pretty concerned. I imagine the, 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 the main thing people should do if they're really worried about it is, is to un unplug their Echo device and send it back. Well, it's not great news for Amazon if that is no. the case. Dan, you know, are there any laws on the books for monitoring devices like this, or should there be independent audits of them? Uh, there should certainly be independent audits. The, the fact that we've invited a whole number of computers into our houses uh, and basically with sensors and the ability to record and network connections to send traffic off represents a real risk to people's privacy and the ability to have uh, you know, confidential relationships and, and private communications. This was a situation in someone's living room, but uh, you know, we, don't, we don't really understand as a society, I think, what it means to have invited this kind of potential surveillance network into our homes. So, Alistair, as it stands now, uh, you know, these features are opt out. I mean, is there a way to opt out of these recordings? <laughs> Or is that just how Alexa works? We were joking this morning that you, you should just be able to shout GDPR <laughs> into the air and then, then everything shuts down. Uh, but I think actually the main thing you can do is there's, there's that button on the top of it where, 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 and that, that will switch it off. And we, we double check that this morning. If, if you switch that off, even the Alexa wake word will, 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 not, will not turn it back on. Right, but that's, uh, that's turning it off. You're fully turning it you're off. Turning but off so what about keeping it on fu fu functionality? Well, well, and having some sort of setting really where you fully. can opt out? Go ahead, Dan. You're not really fully turning it. You're not really fully turning it off just by pressing that button, right? The, the device is a computer. It has some buttons on it, and it has some microphones and some speakers. Pressing the button tells the software in the device to stop recording, but the software might decide to ignore the button as well. These are network-attached computers with all of the problems that network-attached computers have. Uh, they can potentially be buggy. Um, they can make mistakes, and so even to the point where we think that the the system is physically turned off. Uh, the microphone is still probably physically active. There are so other technology Dan, companies that would, are starting to build devices. Would a sort of opt-in feature appease you? Uh, for me personally, definitely not. I wouldn't want one of these devices in my home. Uh, I think the, 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 way that the, the only way to get these sort of voice-activated devices is to have one of these computers listening all the time. And that comes with it, the kinds of mistakes that, that uh, happened recently. But it also potentially comes with uh, mistakes that can happen um, maliciously. Uh, it's not enough to engineer these devices well to make sure that you don't accidentally pick something up. There have been a series of adversarial uh, research on how to, how to fool things like the voice recognition systems of Alexa and other technologies. Um, if you want to look up dolphin attack, you can find researchers using things that humans can't even hear to issue control keywords to voice-activated machines. Um, and so, so th these devices need to actually be designed in an adversarial context, not just, uh, it's hard enough to design them in a, in a friendly context, as we can see. Uh, but, the, but the fact is that they're going to be facing, as the years go by, they'll be facing more and more adversarial interactions. And uh, I, think, I think the prospects don't look good for them. I think to, if people want to be private, it's pretty important to take a second look around you and look at all of the systems that you have in place, the machines that have sensors and that have network capabilities, and consider, uh, is, is the advantage that they give you really worth the privacy risk? I think for most people, the advantage probably um, is not really worth the risk. This isn't just limited to Amazon, Alistair. The Google Home Mini, when it was first launched last year, was also sending recordings back to Google. Google scrambled and they said they fixed it. But, you know, when I look at these devices in my house, I definitely think to myself and wonder sometimes what yeah. they're hearing. <laughs>
this is th this has the the software on it too, right? And it's 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 technically listening right now too. Um, yeah, that that was a, that was a big snafu for the for the Google Mini for sure. And and they had to issue a software update, which is not which is not um, reassuring for people at well, all. Well, and you make a good point that it's also built into smartphones. It, it's certainly built into smartphones. Uh, I I said good night to it last night when I, when I was going to sleep, and it launched some some new good night thing where, where it played me crickets, the sound of crickets, and I couldn't shut it off for about three minutes, which is which is, which is a, a, bit, a bit disturbing. Um, but I, I think Dan's point is 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 the most important one, which is if you if you want to have a private conversation, you have to unplug these things, right? And then more importantly, on a, on a much longer term basis, pe people are are going to have to you know make a decision: do we do we want to get benefits out of this thing or, 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 or do we do we do we want privacy right so Dan what's the solution here I mean is it just say no to technology because most people probably aren't going to pick that option I'm a software developer I'm not going to say say no to, de to, to technology but I do think that the people who are de designing and delivering these systems need to think really clearly about the risk that they're effectively exposing their users to um, this is a question of stewardship and the people who provide these tools need to think uh, clearly about how they can ensure that they provide the tools in a way that their users can understand um, and that give them uh, privacy guarantees that they can understand. There are some manufacturers who are starting to build machines that have sensors in them that can be physically disabled. A physical switch that decouples the microphone from the actual computer would go a long way towards convincing people that the system isn't listening to them when they don't want it to. Um, and that wouldn't be hard for an organization like Amazon or Google to build into their devices. Uh, but the companies that build them are often built as part of the surveillance economy, which, where they, they tend to actually make their money by monetizing the information that they have about user habits. And so it is, in some sense, in their business interest to continue to gather as much data, and a physical switch might be something that works against them. I think they're going to need to have a reckoning about who their customer is. Is their customer the person who's, uh, who controls the device, or is their customer the advertisers or other people who want to control the users of the devices.